Right, so I'll see you later then, all right? Hey, good luck, mate. Cheers. All right, so on, lad. Thought we could have a word about the pizza place, you know. All right, Matt. Hey, has your father-in-law cooled down over that food poisoning business yet? Oh, you're joking, aren't you? He has some stuff going on, haven't he? Hey, you look smart. Oh, cheers, mate. Got an interview. What for? A job. You've got a job with me. Did have a job with you, Matty. I jacked it in, remember? Ah, oh, that was just a tip. Terry will take you back. Oh, no, he won't. Listen, I'll have a word with him. Listen, I've got no intentions of going back there, Matty. If I get this job today, I could be pulling up 12 grand a year. No, oh, what do you want selling? Yeah, conservatories. And earning a lot more money than what we were doing at the pizza parlour. Well, at least, you know, Terry paid us regularly, lad. Matty, listen, I'm not being funny, right? But I've got a wife and a kid on the way. I'm taking what I can. I'll see you around. Here you go. I'm sorry it's not the Ritz, like, but I'm a poverty-stricken student and all that. Look, I'm sorry if I'm in your way, like... No, you're not, no. Good. You know, this is all a bit stupid. I mean, you fancy Margaret, she fancies you. Do you want to go around the shops today and see me mum and dad? No, I just need a bit more time on my own. Thanks, Mike. Well, whatever happens, Derek, the world's not going to end tomorrow. Well, it's par for the course for me, but what are you doing home early? I'm on flexi time, therefore I'm not early. What's your excuse? Oh, I just finished early, that's all. Listen, before we go in, how's Margaret today? I'm still worrying about her missing boyfriend, I should think. This is ridiculous. I mean, we can't walk around her own home on eggshells all the time. Oh, I'm not walking around on eggshells. She's having a bad time, that's all. We all have her. Oh, yeah, yeah, I sympathise, of course, and I hope that things with her and Derek sort themselves out, but in the end, practicalities come into play. And? We don't employ Margaret to neglect Thomas, and I hope she pulls herself together. I don't think they breed stiff upper lips in Oldham. They've probably got more sense. Yes, yeah, but darling, I mean, <laughs> not wanting to sound callous, but Margaret's love life isn't our problem. Quite. So let's leave her to sort it out on her own, shall we? You haven't seen Barry anywhere, have you? Uh, I haven't loved, no. I've been hanging around here for ages. Oh, yeah, another feeling, kid. I deserve a bar of chocolate. Oh, I. I'm worried about your figure, then. I don't have to, in my condition. Oh, I, yeah. Uh, congratulations, <laughs> nice one. Thank you. Hey, All right, Fran, how's I've it going? I've just been round at yours. I thought you were out. He was, love. He was here with me. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking for lover boy Grant. Um, well, you found me instead, haven't you? Yeah, well, given the choice, you're infinitely preferable. Oh, well, I'm just going to go and cook me tea. You're quite welcome to come up and have some if you want. Hey, this is my kind of man talking. Hey, listen, Teddy, I wanted a quick word, mate. What? Listen, I've heard you're a man short, you know, in the pizza parlour, and I just thought, like, you know... Well, you've heard wrong, haven't you? It's only closed until further notice. So, Teddy... Look, I'll let you know, all right. Um, Matty, I don't know what I'm going to do about the pizza parlour. I just can't get my head around not at the minute. All right. I'll pop round later. All right, I'll see you later. See, see ya. Ta-da. Better not tell the job club where to stick the stamps just yet, I don't, Matt. No, I better not, lad. Hey, uh, you will keep working on them, though, won't you, mate? Because this place could be a little gold mine, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just a matter of catching them in the right mood, that's all. Mm. We could work together, couldn't we? You know, get it up and running and that like. Oh, I'll work with anyone, lad, yeah. Listen, have you got experience in food and that? Oh, why, well, yeah. Eat nothing else, do I? <laughs> and I pick things up dead quick and all. <laughs> yeah. Don't be all, don't be all. Listen, I'll see you around, eh? All right, cheers, mate. Need an hand? No, we can manage, thank you. What is it actually, uh, you're taking up and down there? Not that it's, uh, it's any of my business, you know what I mean? Quite. Only I was just wondering. You know, I mean, you fellas, you come and go, don't you? And no one knows what you do. I don't mind giving you an hand. Your offer's appreciated, but in all honesty, everything's well in control. If you excuse me. Market stall, is it? I mean, you know, that's what I've heard. And you're just using upstairs, you know, for storage and that. Uh... Like I said, I'm busy. Aye, aye. So same with a secret, can you? You can say that again. What are they keeping up there, anyway? What's the big deal? At least he spoke to you, mate. I can't get a word out of any of them. I mean, if it's just stuff for a market store, why are they guarding it like Fort Knox? Oh, some market store? What are they selling? Bits off Saddam's Supergun? 
And why doesn't Barry know about it, eh? The landlord. They won't tell him. He's done everything to get in there except blow the place up. Ah. Uh, illegal immigrants. Oh, Jimmy, I mean, it's not going to be illegal immigrants, is it? What are they doing carrying them in and out in cardboard boxes? They could be taking food up there, couldn't they? And smuggling the rubbish out in boxes so as to stop people rooting through their bins. What's in the bin, anyway? Nothing. Barry's checked, hasn't he? They don't even use them. Uh, I'm after a job in here, you know. That young fella's jacked it in. He's had a barney with Terry. Oh, I think the fact that he poisoned his pregnant wife with pizza didn't help either, did he? <laughs> hey, listen, if it's that big a secret, it's got to be knock-off gear, hasn't he? No fault in your logic, Sherlock. Yeah, Pakistan. That's got one of the biggest poppy fields for growing the owl thingy, hasn't he? What? Heroin? Oh, behave, will you? Hang on, hang on. What do you think you are, my sake? Look, they'll bring the stuff in, don't they? All the ingredients. Oh. Take them up there, mix them, package them, take them out in the van and distribute them, don't Go they? Go away, will you? I'm selling you, mate. Yeah. Whoops. Excuse me. All right. Hey, yeah, uh, listen, uh, I'm the caretaker as well, you know, so if you want me to keep an eye on things... Thank you. There's really no need. Oh, it's all right. It's part of my job. That's very kind, but I can assure you, everything's very securely locked at all times. Oh, please yourselves, then. Thank you. Uh, I think I'll just nip upstairs, make sure everything's safe and secure. I mean, I am the caretaker, aren't I? Your funeral. All right, love. I know you go. OK, see you next week. Ta-da. All right, Mum. Uh, family replacement for the Moby had by any chance? James, don't even think about it. Not a chance. This time next year, you won't want to know about the telly. You'll have your head buried in a novel. Mm. First adult literacy class tonight. I'm glad you're going. It's the best thing you've done since you've left school, you know. Besides making me like... All I can remember at school is staring out the window of the dancers' class, waiting for four o'clock. I don't let's just see it's completely different. I hope so. Everyone's there friendly. You'll love it, you know. Have you ever been? Well, why would I go? Well, if you've never been, how do you know everyone's there friendly? Well, it's part of the teaching method, isn't it? You know, creating a warm, friendly environment. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave that. It might be important. Well, if it's that important, you'll come back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see you again. No, she's not, but coming anyway. We'll do with the company. Oh, nice one. Now that Tracy's home, we'll never see the back of you. That's a nice greeting, isn't it, Rod? Any chance of a cup of tea? Yeah. Well, we're in the middle of something. No, we're not. To see you, mate. Nice one. This is purely a social visit. In fact, I'm just trying to avoid someone around the shop. Who? Some girl. Could have worked that one out all on my own. Yeah, well, that's what you get for having a complicated love life, isn't it? Let's take sugar, Barry. Hey, too, please. Hey, what's this? Eh, uh, it's not on, it's just private, you know. All right. Well, Diana's going to night school. How are you? Nice one. What are you studying? English. Language or literature? literature. Language. Do you know, you two communicate just like me, and one of my void. <laughs> How much do you see? Nothing I didn't get in. It looked like you were closing the door. No, I was just about to open it. What for? Well, you know, to let your lads know that I'm around and that, you know, doing my job. How much Mr Grant pay you? Well, actually, that's strictly confidential, you know. Look, I'll give you a little supplement to your wages. From now on, you take extra special care of everyone else's shops. But ignore this one. Well, you seem pretty secure here, don't you? I mean, even the caretaker can't break in. <laughs> don't ever do it. Yeah, well, there. No. Thanks, mate. Oh, and hey, don't tell Mr. Grant. It could be our little secret. I'm not nervous, are you? Oh, no. Tell you right. Would you want me to come in with you until you find the right class? It'd be good, wouldn't it? 
his dumbbell Diana who can't read and write. Can't find a way around on her own as well. Right. See you later. Good luck. You're gonna have the most expensive box of chocolates you got in the shop, please, Ronald. Do you reckon there's any chance of getting the own watch patrol back again or what? I doubt it. Still, it was only motivated by self-interest, wasn't it? Still, you never know, do you? Me chocolates, please. You ready for? How do you mean? They're not for the Farnham's, are they? Well, you've caught me. I always buy the Farnham's chocolates on a Monday and ice cream on a Wednesday. What are you talking about? Have you read me notice? No Farnham's, the bad for me. Eddie. And could you gift wrap the chocolates for me, please, because they're for the special lady in my life. It's our secret anniversary. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nine months to the day since I was first smitten. Of course, it took Marcy a little bit long to realise, but there you go. Sure you can afford this? Do you know what? You'd never insult me like that if I had a posh voice like Max Farnham, would you? Yeah, Maxie Farnham wouldn't get in over that doorstep. Mm. Seven and a half quid. Thank you, Ronald. Well, such lucky, have we, eh? Yeah, well, the uh, harder I work, the luckier I get, don't I? Thank you. Hey, hang on. Behave yourself, will you, Simbad? What's up? Not even a nice try. Oh, I see. Uh, my money's not good enough, is it? I could have done better with a Polaroid. What do you mean? <sighs> see? No watermark, no line through it. Oh, don't tell me it's... Oh, the penny's finally dropped, has it? Not to mention the pound. Oh, I don't believe this. I would, Simbad. All right, Ron. All right, Frank. Owen. Just my luck. What was that about saying uh, the hard of your work? Yeah, cheers, Ron. Yeah, so the money sounds great now, but selling conservatories won't be easy enough. You know? I've got to be trained first. There's an induction course that starts tomorrow. What? They've offered you the job on the spot. Yeah, must have recognised talent. Once you're basic. Well, there isn't one's commission only. Oh, I see. Well, they said the average for a beginner like me is one commission a week. Some get more. But the thing is, I've been told you can earn £500 a week there. Special offer on sausages this week, gents. Cheers, Ron. But don't you think you'd be better off with something a bit more steady? What? Like that pizza parlour next door? Struggling on share buttons till I poison the rest of Liverpool? No, thanks. Yeah, but at least you've got money coming in. I mean, you can budget. I don't want to budget. I want to spend. I want to make a real go of this job. I know I am. I'm going to be dead good at it. I can't wait. I want to be minted. Doesn't it worry you living in a place like this? Worrying solves nothing. You've got to do something. Actions speak louder than words. I have a point there. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, Derek. You don't want to end up like your Mike, do you? Living in a dump, no family, massive debts. Debts I'm opening up all the time. I can't even afford the interest on my credit card. Never mind what I actually offer the stuff I've bought. Can't even afford this dump. Well, you're a divvy for getting into debt in the first place. Isn't he, Father? I'm going to the loo. Is it all right if I stay here a few more days? Only I've got a few more problems to sort out. No, I think you should get in touch with Margaret and me mum. Dear. He's right, you know, Father. I mean, this is a real dump. You need regular meals, hot water, washing machines. Mrs. Dixon will be only yeah, too pleased. I know. I will get in touch with Margaret and Dee Dee. I just need a few more time. Better get your mum and dad round here pronto. You'll have to. Looks to me like he's going off his head. I'm bringing him round here. Look at the state of the place. My mum would go up the wall and my dad would have a laughing fit. And I wouldn't give him the satisfaction. You've got to do something, Mike. I'd rather take him round the close. Take him then. What, wait? A straight jacket. You saw the state of him on Friday. He's not going to go unless he wants to. Is this all over? You're just not wanting to admit defeat to your dad. Derek needs help. Look, I wish I hadn't ripped off my dad and blamed Julia. I wish I hadn't pawned my granddad's medals. But I don't want them two standing here telling me what I already know. Just admit it and own up. Do you understand? Tell them you're sorry. I am sorry. Oh, well, there you go, then. You can't stay here, and neither can he. You know what I mean? Got any work on tonight? None. This laptop's not used much these days, is it? No, I get paid eight hours, so I work eight hours. <laughs> You'd be coming back for me. Progress to sort, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, how long is she going to sit upstairs staring out the window like that? Until she knows that Derek's safe and well, I imagine. I don't know, what a mess. I think we could do with cheering ourselves up. We should go out and see a film one night. Mm. Oh, I'm seeing Claire one night this week. 
Oh, yeah, Claire, from, uh, from the hospital. How many other Claires do I know? No, no, it's just that I thought, with you finishing the chemotherapy, I thought all that was over and done with. Including Claire? Yeah. It's not as if you've got anything in common, is it? Nah, just the old mastectomy, that's all. No, no, I didn't mean it to sound like that. Claire's a dumb sight more important to me than that laptop or work or anything. She knows what's important and what isn't. Beside which, I might be going back in and what then... What for? An implant. Why? Because I want to get back to being normal as much as possible. To looking as normal as... to looking like me. You're fine the way you look now. Oh, come on. Don't pretend you wouldn't rather have both breasts again. Well, not at the risk of your health. I wouldn't know. There is no risk to my health. Silicone's perfectly safe. Then why have all the Americans stopped doing all the implants? Because they might cause cancer. Quite the possibility of causing cancer. The Yanks aren't sure. All right, so one minute it's all right. All these film stars are rushing to do it. The next minute it's scaring the hell out of millions of women. Meaning what exactly? I am just coming to terms with what's happened. Your mastectomy. I don't have an implant. For me, you don't need to. It's, it's not how you look, it's how you feel. I'd rather have you alive and healthy with one breast than... Don't do it for me. Implants are perfectly safe. All the rest is scaremongering. And I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for me. <laughs> Anyone would think it was you going in for the op. I almost wish it was. Mm, don't quite see you as the next Dolly Parton somehow. <laughs> There you go. It's ages right. since I've had uh, Chinese in front of a video. When you said you were going to cook a meal, I thought you meant you were going to cook a meal. Well, I chose the menu, didn't I? Count yourself lucky not eating pizza. But some landlord who won't drink in his own pub. Yeah, well, the health inspector closed me down. He, well, hassled me, didn't he? Bad hygiene. Incorrect fridge temperatures, the lot. I didn't have a clue what I was doing, you know. Well, it's hardly surprising. It wasn't your idea in the first place. It was Barry's idea. Forget Barry. Get into something that interests you for your benefit, not his. Mind you, I ate loads of them pizzas, you know, I never felt a thing. <laughs> you must have a cast iron stomach. Have you always been like that? Oh, well, you should have seen me when I was a kid. I had knees like knots in Sparrow's ankles. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing here? I've come to see a friend. Well, if it's money you're after, you'll have to take me to court. See how far that gets you, eh? I see. It's your usual milk of human kindness mood. What happened? The loved one from downstairs give you the elbow, did she? Finally woke up and saw the frog was a toad. Fran, will you just get out? You know, this macho stuff doesn't quite cut it with a pregnant woman. Unless we should forget, I am pregnant. Do me a favour, will you? Just do one. Hang on a minute. I thought we were mates. Well, yeah, we are, and that we shared this flat. What are you going on about, Terry? Yeah, well, I invited Fran in, didn't I, as my guest, and I wanted to stay, all right? Look, there's loads of food on the table. We've got a video. Get a fork, get stuck in. If not, please yourself. All right, Sin. All right, mate. Looks like another victim of the recession, eh? Gone bust before they've even opened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've gone with the Asians, mate. About as far as the door. You're having about as much luck as me. How do you mean? I mean, I am a lousy house husband. Jackie's bound to get fed up being the breadwinner and me being broke, isn't she? If I don't find something soon, I'm gonna lose her, you know. Being straight's really boring, isn't it? Yeah, hey. Hey, yeah. What's this? It's a look like it's 20 buff. I'm a sucker for a sob story, mate. Hey, no, listen, I never but, meant hey, any... if I thought you were, look, I owed you it, all right? All right, from where? From about six months ago, I thought you'd forgot. <laughs> That's it, you could have got away with that, mate. Well, you're a mate, aren't you? You're right, I am your mate. Well, we've known each other a long time now, Jim. Yeah, I suppose we have, haven't we? And we trust each other. Well, if you can't trust your mates... Hey, you won't forget this, Ken. Hey, look, Jimmy, it's only money, mate, all right? And you're right. And what's money compared with the important things like friendship, trust? Mm, absolutely. I'm telling you, I won't forget this. Hello. All right. 
What are you doing back so early? They've seen the pot. You didn't bottle out, did you? No, I didn't. Well, why aren't you still at the classes, then? Well, it's just registration this time, name, address and all that. It doesn't start properly till next week. Didn't he give you any books? Coursework? Syllabus? Nothing like that? Wouldn't be much point, really, would there? I can't read yet. State of us two. You worried sick about Margaret? Me living in a dump like this? In five years' time, we'll look back on this and laugh ourselves stupid. Yeah. When you think about it, religion causes a lot of misery and unhappiness, doesn't it? Belfast, the Middle East, Hindus, Christians, Muslims, Jews, all killing each other. I mean, it's mad. And now you're dead unhappy and so's Margaret. I mean, if you weren't a Catholic, you'd be all right, wouldn't you? Yes. But I am a Catholic. A Catholic priest. The church says I'm doing wrong. Oh, why don't you become an Anglican? I will vicar, then you can get married. Wish it was that easy. But it's, it's against God's holy rule. God never said that you couldn't love women. They're man-made rules. Take no notice. And it all gets reduced to nothing. So you might as well make the most of it. Actions speak louder than words. Isn't that what your friend Keith said? Right, why don't we have a cup of tea and then go round the coast and see me mum, me dad and Margaret? It's too late for all that. We can all sit round and talk it all out. We've tried all that and it didn't work. Oh, come here, Uncle Daddy. Let's get out of this dump. Let's go home and sort it all out once and for all. Mike, I know you mean well. I can sort it all out here. I know it's got to be done. I just need the time to do it. On my own. To hear with Let you. Go. It's bad enough you turning Angie against me, right? Barry, please. Or turning Terry against me, even for the conniving little bitch like you. That's taking it a bit too far. Barry, now I'm warning you. Me. Stay away from me and my friends, or there's gonna be trouble, all right? Aye, aye, what's going on here? What's going on? Oh, just stay out of it with no, you, Matty. Please don't go, please help me. You're a bitch, you. Look, knock it off while you'll answer to me. I mean it, Barry. Cool, it's all right. Might be better if you went home, love. Thank you. And make sure you don't come back again, do you hear? Shame me you treating a woman like that. Well, just stay out of it, will you, Matty? These are my shops around here, and I can do what I want. Tom and Pippa believe that Adam's negligence caused Sophie's accident in Home and Away, next on Living. something, you know. Yeah, I, I will too. Should we go round the shop today, see me mum and dad? Well, not today. Well, couldn't you at least phone or something? I just need a bit more time on my own. How much time do you need in front of that window? I mean, the view's not that great. It's fine. Derek, look, my mate wants his room back, which means I'm gonna need this room back. I still 
have to make my peace with God, reconcile myself. God can help me solve everything, help me to win the fight. Your fight's not with God, it's with the church and all the stupid rules. Look, just get together with Margaret, that's what you both want. You always leave your front door open. People upstairs, born in the barn. Morning. Morning. How's it going? Oh, it's fine. Has he had anything to eat lately? Time to get your mum and dad round here. Oh, I can't. What's in this dump? If he doesn't get help soon, you never know what might happen. Derek, we're going round to college for a few hours. Are you going to be all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be fine. Just uh, help yourself to whatever food you can find. See you later. That's one pound oh, ten change. Look, so yeah. Can you manage? Yes. <laughs> All right. Love. See you again. Bye. Sure. Oh yeah, love. Do you want that one? Sure. You know, Patricia wants my opinion on this. Will you go through it with me again? What's the uh, sudden fascination for Patricia Farnham, then? Well, she's nice, and her job's interesting. And with me knowing all about cosmetics, I'm the perfect person to help her. Yeah, but her and Max? What about them? Well, I couldn't really see him standing next to me at the match, could you? Oh, well, they're not stuck up. Yeah, but they're different than us, though, aren't they? Well, she said I could go round any time. In fact, I'm going on the way home. Might invite them for tea sometime. Could do it when I'm on nights. But I want you there. Oh, what for? You know, in case anything happens, in case I have to feed something. Can I have anything you need? Yes, thanks. Oh, yes, look at this. My favourite nephew and his lovely betrothed. Hiya. Yeah, right, yeah. Being saved by my beautiful scouse spouse. He's after something? On the contrary, I'm here to give, not to receive. Uh, are you buying or just disturbing my customers and staff? Buying, sir. Right, love, thanks. That's 150. Charm. Oh, that's right, love, thanks. Charm. 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 20 pence, please. Sure you can afford all that, Jim? Yes, and more. The alarm bells are ringing in my bank account, Jimmy. Listen, there. Uh, how would you fancy going out tonight, kid? What with? ta -da. This. Thank you, that'll do nicely. What for? I mean, you heard it. 20 quid for an haircut. Behave, will you, Jackie? Never show a woman the colour of your money, Jimmy. Especially when that woman's keeping you. You owe me, Jimmy. Just remember who pays the bills. Yeah, but... And where did that money come from? The betting shop? No. Sinbad. He owed me. Honest. Sinbad paying back a loan to you. I've heard everything now. But not being one to look a gift horse in the mouth. Ron, any chance of an hour off? Oh, hi, come in. Hiya. Uh, Margaret, coffee's ready. I've brought your cosmetics research back. I've written a few things down. Oh, great. Want a coffee? Yeah. Love your teapots. Yeah, they're good, aren't they? Thanks. Have you thought any more about your decorating plans? I'm with torture, yeah, but not much action yet. What will you put on the windows? I think you'll have curtains or blinds. I like curtains, especially if you can get the fabric to match the sofa. Mm, I was thinking of having a change in here myself. Here, have a look. I put markers on the things I like. Oh, lovely. Yeah, there are some nice things in there, aren't there? They do a full coordinated range, you know, curtains, fabrics, paints, the lot. Mm. What page is that? Uh, the one you've got to open at, I think. Yeah, see? Oh, yeah. It's terribly small print. Uh, would you like to take it away and look at it? Oh, yeah, that'd be nice, thanks. So, uh, what did you make of all this cosmetics research, you being the local expert? Well, if our shop's anything to go by, I'd say it's pretty accurate. Fellas buy all the obvious perfumes when they try to impress the girlfriends, usually the ones they've seen in adverts. But girls go for more personal favourites, the most they can afford. Which one do you like? Eternity. I give big hints to Rod when I'm going low on it. <laughs> Expensive perfume seen as making a statement about yourself. See, top of the page. Oh, just some stuff on perfumes. Yeah. All right, see ya. She's not very talkative lately. A boyfriend trouble.
There you go, love. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Ta da. Well, I suppose I'd better make you a nice cup of eh? Seems how you kindly agreed to work in your own husband's shop. If only for an hour, like. Uh, allow me. Mm. Mum. Oh, hello. Come to see us both this time, eh? It's Derek. Have you seen him? Where is he? He's in my place. Oh, thank God for that. What the hell's he doing there? Look, I think he better hurry up. I'm worried about what he might do. Right, let's go. Hey, hey, hang on a minute, hang on. Hadn't somebody better tell Margaret? Someone better not. He's gonna want to see her, isn't he? If it wasn't for her, he wouldn't have gone missing. But he's still gonna want to see her. He's my brother. Yeah, and whether you like her or not, Dee, they've got something going, haven't they? She's never gonna see him ever again if I've got anything to do with her. Dee Dee, you are not. Ron, I mean it. She stays away. Come on, Keith's waiting in the van. What's your address? 16 Russell Lee Road, bottom bell. Right. OK, I'll get Jackie Corkill at the hairdressers and I'll see you there, OK? Have you finished that car yet? Yeah? First day in the job, eh? How'd it go? First day it's raining today. Oh, right, yeah. Well, that was great, it was sound. So, uh, when's your first pay packet? Well, I don't start properly till next week. What, you don't earn anything this week? No, I'm not working yet. This is the intensive training week. Well, when will you get paid? Well, that's what I've made my first sale, probably. When the conservatory's been built and the customer's paid up. It's commission only, I told you. Well, that could take weeks. Oh, well, it's a couple of weeks after the sale maximum. So, uh, how much do you reckon you'll earn? 350, 450, 500 quid a week. Depends on how many commissions I get. Well, I hope it keeps fine for you, don't lad. I wouldn't fancy you. No, I've got to be good at it, you know. I mean, I was listening to them today and I thought to myself, this is great, this. This is for me. I took it all in and the time just went like that. I'm going to make a real good go of this job, Mr. Rogers. I know I am. Someone's in a hurry. Margaret there. Mr. Dixon. It's Derek, come out. Oh, is he all right? Come on. Where is he? He's round around Michael's place. What's he doing there? Don't ask me. What did he ask for me? Let's just get there, anyway. On your own, are you? Looks that way. Not interrupting any little cosy tete a tete, am I? No. Followed by a nice little cosy family video. No. With those we love so dear. Oh, I thought you'd have got over that by now. It takes you a long time to get over being stabbed in the back tents. You're just choked because you ain't calling the shots and you ain't in control of the situation. Oh, so that was it. 
You might find this hard to understand, but I regard Fran as a friend. Yesterday you were acting like she was your mother. Yeah. And you were acting as though she was a punch bag. I know all about it. Well, it wasn't a secret. It's a good job Matty was about, wasn't it? I mean, attacking a woman isn't something you want to tell your grandkids about, is it, now? I wasn't attacking her. Well, that's not the way Matty saw it, and I don't think Fran did either. Look, you just can't go around telling people where they can and cannot breed. This isn't Chicago. I told you, Fran was my guest. All right, then. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll walk around in sackcloth and ashes for a month, eh? Barry, I'm not trying to score points. I'm just trying to put you right on a few things. Pass the salt and pepper, will you? Just saying, clean your act up, that's all. All right. I'm the first to admit that I'm not a saint. Now, can I give you a bit of good news? Sure. I've just met a couple of fellas, right? Experienced managers. Take one of them on, and your problems at the pizza parlour are over. See? You're doing it again, aren't you? Well, have you got a better idea? See? Fran's right, isn't she? You're trying to control my life, make my decisions for me. Look, while the pizza parlour's closed, you're losing money. The pizza parlour was your idea, not mine. All right, so it was my idea. You liked it. I didn't even think about it. I just said, yeah. All right, this is your decision, right? What's happening with the pizza parlour tenants, and can I help in any way? Fran says I'm not cut out for it. Now, there's a surprise. Fran, what do you say to I agree with her. I'm not cut out for it. I'm not taking any more advice from you. Uncle Derek, open the door, eh? Derek! Derek, Derek, just say something so we know you're all right. Where is he? What's Uncle she Derek? doing here? Same as you would imagine. What's happening? Can't get a word out of him. Can you hear anything? Open the door. It's locked. You should get open all then. All right, everybody up the road. Right, Look, One, perhaps we should turn down the window. We've got here. One more, you ready? Derek! Derek! I'm here now, Derek. It's all right. Everything's gonna be fine. We're gonna take you home with us. Say something, Derek. It's me, Margaret. There's no need to worry about anything. Why ain't he talking? Derek, we're here. All he needs is a bath and some decent food. He needs a doctor. He needs rest and comfort. He doesn't need you. You're not wanted here. Oh, and you are. I'm his sister. I'm his own flesh and blood. Well, I happen to love him. It's a stupid schoolgirl crush. Love. You don't know the meaning of the word. And you do. This is where your love's got him. This is what it's reduced him to. Look, I think we should all calm down a bit. He's a normal parish priest. He always has been and he always will be. Yeah, a normal parish priest who's just nearly hanged himself. Well, you're the cause of it. What's he see you think that, that I... Yes, I do. Oh, you don't know him. You don't know anything. You all just shut up, please. Can't you see? This is what we're trying to get away from. You've obviously forgotten, but I'm still here. Just about. I want I'm going to talk to Margaret. In private. She's not... Oh, yes, she is. It's what Derek wants. Come on. Come on. You'll be in the hall, Derek. All right. Close the door, please. So, what do you call this? It's where to live. So... How did it go with your new mate, Patricia? She might be getting new curtains. She wanted to know what I think of all these. Oh. Talking about perfumes and that, you know, off the research thing. It's great. I was thinking of asking them over, you know, with just the two of us. Oh, not that again. Why? You know, just to get to know them a bit. Yeah, and after you and her have babbled on about fabrics and perfumes, what else do we say? Read any good books lately, Max? You're right. Am I kidding? I can't come here. I don't mean to put you off. Maybe you can be friends with her. But me and Max. Invite her over any time when I'm not around. No, I'll just carry on being me. Quit while I'm winning. 
Hey, look, if you and Patricia get on OK, then keep seeing her. And the friendly we get, the more likely she is to find out about me. I think she already knows anyway. How? She asked me to read something, and I just made this pathetic excuse, and she just pretended everything was normal. Well, it will be normal soon, now that you're going to literacy classes. As long as you are going, that is. Of course I am. Well, that's all right then, isn't it? What's happening? I'm putting the first nail in the coffin. Where's the funeral? This place here. Well, it is as far as I'm concerned. I'm selling all the stuff. You can do what you want. Although I know you will anyway. So what are you going to do with yourself instead? Well, Fran reckons I should find something that I want to do, something that suits me. Well, wouldn't it be an idea to keep this open while you fix yourself up with something else? No, Fran's got the right idea. If I'm going to make a clean break, then make a clean break. This lot is going in the for sale corner. You'll be taking a big loss on it all, you know, sir. Well, what's money to a man of my means? No, Fran's right. If I'm going to make a clean start, then I should get rid of all this. Are you sure you're doing what you want and not just what Fran wants? You know what? What you don't like about her is the fact that she's got guts enough to give you a dose of your own medicine. All right, boys. All right, Jim. What do you want? I just thought I'd remind the proprietor of my offer. He shouldn't refuse, that's all. You what? Well, there's a vacancy here, isn't there? So that, Jimmy. Oh, why well, you haven't given it to someone else, have you? Jimmy, I'm selling everything off. All the gear, lock, stock and barrel. But if you know someone who's interested, I'll pay you to find us for you, all right? Well, what are you doing that for, mate? Listen, this place could work, no problem. I've had all this before. Yeah, but it's the only... It's a place for miles. I've had all this off him. Yeah, well, great minds think alike, don't you, Baz? Thanks for dropping in, Jimmy. Goodbye. Yeah, see you. See you, Jim. So, I suppose you'll end up doing what you want in the end. Wrong. In the beginning, I'll do what I want, the middle and the end. I'm only trying to save you money, Terry. No, you're trying to take control again. Who's filled your head with all this, eh? Oh, of course. How stupid of me. It's Fran, isn't it? No, I didn't need her to figure this out. Just half a decent memory. Come again. You always try and control people's lives, don't you? That's what you do with the women. And they end up leaving you or trying to take control of you. Shouldn't I be lying down on the couch while you tell me this, doctor? You did it to Tracy, didn't you, over the abortion? Now you're trying to do it to Fran, only the other way around. You manipulated me and Sue, you've done the same to Angie. I can see it a mile away. Listen, history is all about interpretation. Didn't anyone ever tell you that? There's nothing wrong with my memory. It's just that Fran confirmed a few things that I was thinking. Sounds to me like Fran's doing all the thinking, Terry. No, it was a team effort, and I'm on her side. All right. Oh, how much longer are they going to be? As long as it takes. Did you bring her along before? She'd be none the wiser. I've got a few things to say to you when we go there. Oh, good. What's for tea? Oh, don't push it, Ron. Tell me something, Keith. Go on. Is your family as warm and as loving and as closely knit as ours? <laughs> What's so funny? Your uncle just nearly committed suicide. How long's he been here, anyway? Since Friday. And you just told us now! Well, he made me promise not to let on, otherwise he wouldn't have come back here with us. <sighs> so this is the wonderful flat you've been staying in? The flash pad you've been decorating? Surprise is not infested. Stop worrying, there's no mice or rats. I oh, know. Where have you gone? The rent tribunal. How long have you been rehearsing that one for? Well, like your mother said, we'll discuss this dump when we get home, and you better have some good answers ready. Oh, I'm going to go in. No, you're not, Dee. No, you're not. This is strictly between them two. What are they saying? Dee, how the hell do I know what they're saying? He's telling her to get out of his life. I hope. No, I nearly went through with it. I was that close. I'm glad you didn't. I even put my head in that thing. Would have been easy. But you stopped me. Me? You and Mike. Though he doesn't know it. He kept telling me my argument wasn't with God, and he was right. It just took so long for it to sink into me. It's funny how the most complex questions have the most straightforward answers. 
He could see it. I couldn't. I wish Patty your problem, though. No. You were what stopped me. See, I thought it was a choice between you and the church. And in the way it was. But I thought God and the church are one and the same thing, lined up against you, and that that was the choice. See, the church is an organisation. My argument's not with the job I love. The rules I'm breaking on, God's rules, they're man-made. And that choice I spoke about is between you and those man-made rules. I don't... I'm leaving the priesthood. Too bad, Mars. Oh, do you really think this will help get the school rebuilt? Well, there's no harm done. It's better than just sitting around waiting, isn't it? What's the response been like? 200 down, 25,000 to go. Oh, I can't <laughs> criticise your stay in power. Not bad for a one-man band, eh? Petitions are all well and good, but what you need is something to grab everyone's attention. I've been thinking about that. Start the day soon. I'm thinking of throwing myself under the Queen's horse, you know. Yeah. Well, remind me not to bet on that one, won't you? Can anyone change this? Joking, Joking aren't, aren't you? you? Oh, marvellous, isn't it? You could have all kinds of change now just to get you in the money. You'd think they'd have a float in the salon. Maybe they just don't want to pay you. Not the only ones. The cases, just call me loose change. Anyway, Mick, what you need is a bit of political muscle. Contact your local MP, that's what he's there for. That's an idea, Mars. Don't waste your breath. Sorry, I spoke. You want publicity? Get in touch with all the papers, the locals, the nationals, all of them. What's wrong with contacting his MP? Oh, come off it, Mars. The election's over now. Politicians aren't going to want to know, are they? I'm late for the gym. Do you want to lift to your class? No, I prefer to go on my own. Do you want me to pick you up after then? No, it's too much trouble for you. I get the bus. All right then. Come on. Oh, hello. It's up, is it? Yeah, or I'm dreaming. You must be hungry. Yeah, a bit peckish, yeah. Right, I'm off down the shop. Jackie Corkle's done me for the love over time for one week, so I shall see you later. Yeah. Cheers, Ron. Right, tea will be ready in about one and a half hours. Do you want to help yourself to a sandwich? Uh, fine, yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, Dexy. By the way, if you're uh, feeling bad about eating us out of house and home, you can always give me a hand down the shop for half an hour, if you like. Well, I'll have to see you then, eh? No, I bet you will. Ta-da. <sighs> Dee Dee will be trying to turn him against me, you know. I know she will. Derek's not going to turn his back on you now, Margaret. You've got to trust him. It's a vital element in any relationship. Oh, I trust Derek with my life. I won't trust her with an empty packet of Chris. Anyway, there's nothing I can do about it. He's got nowhere else to go. How long is he staying next door? Just till he gets back to something like normal, whatever that means. Then what? I don't know. 
Well, if he's really desperate, he can stay here for the week. What? Seven nights in total, and that's it. So long as he doesn't mind sleeping on the sofa. Oh, do you mean it? I'm regretting it already. What about Max? Well, he can sleep with me. No, I mean, what do you have something to say about it? Well, my credit's very good with Max at the minute for all sorts of reasons. I'll pitch it to him as one in the eye for Ron. Never know, might wash. Oh, I don't know what to say. You can tell Derek that Hotel Farnham awaits his presence. Oh, I can't thank you enough. I shouldn't build your hopes up. He might be quite happy where he is. Under the same roof as Dee Dee. I think he'd rather have a sauna with Ian Paisley. In six months' time, this thing with Margaret may have blown over. And you'll suddenly realise in your heart that you're still a priest. But that's a priest without a church, congregation, home, job. Just got up. Be time for bed again in another six hours. What do you want? Dee Dee, please. I come see Derek. You've seen him? Dee. See how he is. This is how he is, all right. And this is how you are. You've got a nerve. Been giving him the third degree as well, have you? Get out. Look, Derek, um, if you need somewhere to stay, bit of peace and quiet, Patricia said we can always find a bed for you next door. I bet you can. It's a genuine offer on the settee. Tell her thanks, but I'll think about it. Get out of my house. Cheek of that hard-faced little... And you're no better. I'll think about it. She cares about me, that's all. She cares a lot. You're not going, Derek. You can't leave here. You can't. Hope you're gonna buy something now. What? This man here, he's the last of the big spenders. Oh, spare me, please. Hey, don't insult your customers. He's about to buy me a present, aren't you? No. Here you are. I can tell you mile away, you're gonna buy yes, me a mate. present. Yeah, well, if I was, I'm not now. Hey, don't push it, Mars. Man's vicious when he's cornered. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> Where are you getting the money? Yeah. Uh, oh, come on, I hate to see a grown man cry as empty as his wallet. <laughs> see, you see you later. later. Yeah, well, later. I'll see you first. <laughs> see you, Michael. <laughs> so, chocolates for the lady, is it? Correct. I thought you two were on diets. Yeah, well, I'm not going to eat them. We're just going to look at them, aren't we? Last longer that way. <laughs> All right, before you say anything, that came from next door at the salon. <laughs> God loves a tryer. Well, hang on a minute. I'll not see you in a week. So I take it this means you've come to a decision, eh? Look, there's still time to have a go at it. Nah, it's not for me, is it? It's a pity you couldn't sell some of those perishables off. Save yourself a few, Bob. <gasps> Who to? Well, to another pizza parlour. Give them a deal. Oh, it's not worth the petrol money, is it? Oh, yeah. So that's it, then, eh? Finally given up, have we? Come to give your mate a hand, have you? Oh, no, I wouldn't, eh? I mean, Teddy makes his own decisions now, doesn't he? With a little advice from others. I mean, what do you want to listen to me for? I'm only his best mate. Hold on. Oh, Sinbad. It's Friday, so we know you're happy. Yeah, well, I'm not. Yeah, well, I'd never have guessed. There you go. What's that? Hey, you could take that as a personal insult, you know. Yeah, well, you can't be too careful these days, can you? Because there's fake 20s going round. There's always fake 20s going round. Yeah, well, I've had two this week, and that's two too many. And I've just had one from one of your tenants. Who? The hairdressers. And who gave you the other one? There you go, love. One pound twenty five change. You. OK. Ta da. So, apart from the hellfire and damnation, what else did my better half have to say? Oh, well, uh, she thinks I should see a doctor. No, well, it sounds like common sense to me. But I'm OK. I've had a great weight lifted off my shoulders. Yes, yeah, so we've noticed. But I'm OK. I'm just glad to be here. Well, amen to that. Oh, sorry. No offence. Actually, I'm just surprised that anybody survived a full day at our Michael's place. It's a disgrace. I owe Michael everything. Hey. As soon as he set eyes on you, he should have been straight round to us. Yeah, and if he had, I'd have gone off again. Are you too close to this, Ron? You've got a good lad there. Oh, ah, yeah. 
He gave me time and space. Never crowded me, never judged me like everybody else did. You can't buy that quality. He kept telling me how simple it was. And it is, you know. I, I learned that from him. Oh, yeah. It's simple, isn't it, getting yourself into debt? And even simpler thieving off your own family? Wouldn't you have him back? Of course I would. If only for Dee Dee's sake. Yeah, but how do you feel? Well, I can't stand by and watch him rot in that awful up to his eyes in credit card bills. But you know him, Derek. He's stubborn. I can't make him come home. Well, all you can do is let him know that the offer's there. The rest is up to him. I suppose so. Anyway, what about you and Margaret? She's a nice girl, even if she does live with the Farnhams. Why don't you go around and see her, talk it through? And don't worry about Dee Dee. I can handle her. Ah! Good afternoon, madam. That's not bad, that, you know. Now, mixed up with a bunch of real ones, in a pub, no-one would notice. Yeah, well, Ron Dixon did, didn't he? Yeah, not in a pub if he'd had a few pints. So, where'd you get it from? Nowhere. Are you hiding something? No, I'm not hiding nothing. Hey, hey, boys. It's not a corner for a chat. I'd be quiet out there, you know, with the old position, like. All right, then, uh, thanks for the chat. Do it again sometime, eh? Now, there's a lot of things that you're not good at, Sinbad. And lying is one of them. So the second one, where did you get it from? I can't tell you. Oh, yes, you can. I can't. All right, fair enough. You're sacked. Oh, what? Matty needs a job. Oh, hey, Barry. Oh, look, he'd make a good caretaker, wouldn't he? I mean, he's honest. He'd do as he's told. And when the boss wanted to know something, he'd tell him. Look, if I told you, you would really sack me, wouldn't you? Look, you're sacked already, so you might as well tell me. You might have a chance of getting your job back. It was one of the Asians. You've been talking to a moodsler? They were putting all the stuff away, weren't they? You said keep your eye open if anything happens. So I saw the opportunity and I went to have a look. He left the flat door open, didn't he? But I got caught. Well, what did you see? I didn't see anything, did I? I got caught before he had a chance to look in. He threatened me. And then he gave me one of these. Oh, I thought you'd have a gob on if you thought I was getting paid by them to turn a blind eye. And I've still been keeping an eye on the flats, honest. Marvellous, though, isn't it? That's the second one of them I've had. Well, tell me this, then. Why would he threaten you and then try to bribe you with his 20? Yeah, with a fake 20? Yeah, a fake 20. That's it, Simbad! Oh, Barry, I didn't know you cared. <laughs> That's it! Did mess the place up? Do they take advance bookings at this hotel, or what? Do they even take credit cards? All right, I haven't come for a fight. I'll have you some tea or coffee, but the porter's on leave. I oh, know. Can I get the staff, eh? Ah, you know what it's like. That was a smart bit of work, finding Derek. That was a stroke of luck. When you make your own luck in this world. Wouldn't have been so smart if he'd have topped himself, would he? Well, he didn't, did he? And that was the lucky bit. Listen, Michael, uh, your mother doesn't want you living here, you know, and, well, neither do I. We want you to come home. When I bought the keyboard, I thought it was an investment, you know. Money from gigs had covered the payments. And I got behind, and it was dead easy to get another credit card, you know, borrow from Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, no, I know. The slippery slope. And it was the interest that did me in. It just kept getting bigger. More credit than Robert Maxwell. I didn't think it'd turn into a punch up, though. And I thought you were too big to have your behind smacked, and now I know it. I tell you, that punch knocked the wind right out of me. 
I came away with a fat lip. It's a pity John Harrison was the only one there, eh? Would have made a great advert for the shop. Dad, I owe Julia a big apology. Yeah, you and me both. She's still not talking to us. But you can't blame me for the keyboard, though. I wonder when that was going to crop up. All right, all right. I'll hold my hands up on that one. But I did only sell it for your own good, you know. And what about your granddad's medals? Yeah, I admit, that was the worst. But I didn't know what else to do. It was the debt closing in on me. How bad is the debt? Pretty bad. It's getting worse. Bit of a mess, really, isn't it? Well, I've stayed in better hotels, yeah. So, are you going to come home, or? Things might have gone too far between us. I know this might sound a bit acneed, but we're still family, you know. I'll think about it, okay? Okay. Any luck, mate? I'll get a minute, mate. Anyone home? Up here, Matty. Still no sign of Terry. Well, he'll turn up soon. Could you do us a favour? Go ahead. Could you hang around downstairs, see if any of my Asian friends turn up? Oh, aye. Not on dodgy, is it? Well, I don't know. Look, uh, I'm the landlord. I'm responsible for what's in that flat. What, what do you think's going on, eh? Well, I'll find out when I get in, won't I? Right. Yeah, mate, thanks a lot. No need for the heat seat, all right? Yeah, hold that for us. Right. Well, that settles it, then. Settles what? The rent's going up. I know it's very kind of her, but... I mean, moving here, it's... It's not the solution, is it? No. Too fast to date, day. Uh, I'm just nipping over to the Cork Hills, so... Uh, thanks for the offer, Patricia. I, I do appreciate it, but, um, well, when I do move from next door, it will be, well, to somewhere a bit more permanent. Fair enough. Hope you find somewhere soon. Right, you're on your own. I'm off. See ya. Thanks. Bye. She's not just very kind, she's very diplomatic. Oh, she's just... She's been great. So, what's next, then? Oh, well, I start scanning her for rent columns. Start keeping my head to the ground for uh, flat vacancies. Yeah, and you know in then? Oh, no, 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 no. I wish it was that easy. No, no, no. Priests don't can their notice in. I'll have to go and see him. Who, Father Thornton? No, no, no. It'll be the big guns. It'll be Bishop Carter. Hello. Hello. Am I disturbing you? No, not at all. Would you like a coffee or something? Oh, no, no. Listen, I just popped round to say thanks ever so much for all the time and trouble you took on that cosmetic survey. Your comments were really useful. Oh, that's no trouble at all. I enjoyed reading it. Yeah, so did I. Well, now you're here, maybe I could pick your brains a bit. Um, yeah, by all means. Well, as soon as Tracy, Tomo and Rod's nan leave, well, I'm going to turn this hotel into a home. <sighs> Thinking of redecorating from top to bottom, starting in here. Yeah, put your personal stamp on it, eh? Make it really your house. Exactly. I want to change everything, you know, sofa, chairs, tables. Oh, uh, all right. Hi. Eh, uh, thought you'd still be at your class? Well, yeah. You said you were going to go regularly. What happened? I gave her a lift. Oh. Oh, I was just driving by the bus stop, saw Diana, and I did my Samaritan bit. That's right. Lovely car. Yeah, well, spare seat. Seems silly not to use it. 
Couldn't agree more. Right, um, I'm just going to get a shower. Excuse me. What arm am I doing? I'm not doing any arm, am I? Correct? Yes? Barry, you own all these shops. In a few months, you're going to be able to sit back and live off the rent. I mean, why risk it all for a mere... For a mere 35 grand? Well, you're going to... Oh, 35 grand? You'll get 10 years. Listen, forgers get more than murderers and rapists. How many times do you want telling him, bad? No one's going to know. Barry, the busies will trace it back to you. How far do you think you're going to get spreading this around before it gets clocked? Look at Ron Dixon. He spotted them fake 20s both times. Right. I've made me withdrawal. Barry, you are mad for doing this. Look, I don't like being used, Sinbad. I'm the landlord. I could go down for exactly. this. Exactly! Look, at worst, I thought it was knock-off stuff, but this, this is terrible. Barry. Right. Forget it. It never happened. We were never here. Come on. You want a hand? You wash, I'll dry. It might be better if you just went. See, when Rod asked before, when I said I'd given you a lift, where was it you were supposed to have been? Diana, do you have difficulty in reading? Was it a reading class you were supposed to be at? Oh, you probably think I'm stupid. You're probably right. I don't think that at all. Well, I am. I was being stupid. The class take out. I don't even feel stupid. It's not the way you come across. Oh, it's an act. Well, Rod thinks the world of you, that's obvious. I don't think any less of you for it. I'm just so scared of it all. You won't tell anyone, will you? Of course not. You can do it, you know. You can learn. You just have to be brave. What are you storing up there? Eh, uh, nothing. It's just a bit of business, you know, Matt. What sort? Like I say, just a bit of business. Nothing to do with you. What do you want? Well, I just thought I could get Terry to think again about this place, you know. Stop him making a big mistake. You'll be lucky. He's already made his mind up. I thought you were his mate. I used to be. All right, Terry, lad. I was just saying to Barry. You still could do something with this place, you know, didn't I, Barry? You know what I mean? If the three of us got together, like, all pulling together, maybe we could have a go at it. What do you think? Well, you can't have it both ways, Ted. How do you mean? Well, the other day, you were telling me I should keep your nose out of other people's business. So you're gonna have to find someone else to lean on now, aren't you? Uncle Barry won't be holding your hand anymore. It's your business. Hey, that's no way to treat a friend. It's a pleasure. There's a side of you I really don't like. And there's a side of me that couldn't give a toss what you think, OK? Take no notice of them, Matty. Oh, it must be a gift. What must be? The way you treat people. Me, Terry, and that poor girl. You've changed, Barry, for the worse. That poor girl. Who do you think you are, eh? Unfortunately, Fran is my problem, isn't he? She happens to be a pain in the... There's no need to knock her about like that. What you did to her the other night was disgusting. Look, just do one, will you, Matty? I don't have to listen to this. You've got no right to judge me. Hey, he's got more right to say to you what he wants than anybody else. No, I haven't. Doesn't matter. He didn't mean it. Forget it. You were right. I was out of order. Hey, Tell him. What's going on? Nothing. Teddy, tell him, Matty. He didn't know what he was saying. Forget it. Has this got something to do with Fran? What is it with you two, eh? How come you're always on her side? Why can't you just keep out of it? I mean, what's the point of an unwanted child with a faceless dad who doesn't care? And no matter what you two say about Fran, she'd make a lousy mother. I mean, I've done all I can. I've offered the money to get rid of it. So why can't you just stop going on about it, eh? I mean, can you just tell me something? What is she to you? Nothing. Well, what are you going on about? What's there to worry about? You think she was accusing you two of being a father? I'll see you, Terry. Well, Matty, listen. I'm sorry. I don't want to argue with you. I'll see you, Barry. Look, don't be like this, eh? Look, my argument's not with you. 
Oh, but Teddy, it's just, well, I've got a few presses on at the moment, you know, personal and business and all that. And I'm sorry you saw me like that with Fran the other day, but she deserved it. She'd been getting on my nerves. You just can't bully her into having an abortion. It's her baby we're talking about here. Yeah, that's right. It's her baby. It's not yours and it's not mine, so it's nothing for you to worry about. He's got everything to worry about. You what? Matty's going to be a granddad, aren't you, Matty? You know, that baby you're so eager to get rid of, well, it's Matty's grandchild. Bobby isn't your real dad. Oh, behave, will you, Terry? He isn't. Your mum told me. Her and Sue had a lot in common. Bobby isn't your real dad. Matty is. Oh, what is this, eh? Some kind of Jack and Ori story or something? I know who me half fella is. It's true. I'm sorry, Matty. What is all this, Matt? I'm sorry, lad. I have to come round. Well... One word. It's gonna mean a lot, Matty. The truth. Who's truth, Barry? There's been a lot said. I mean, you know I what Tommy said? Want you filling my head full of crap. I don't even know what to call you. In fact, I don't believe you. Me and your mum, we had... We had respect for each other. I wanted it to be more than that. I would have loved to have brought you up as my own and called you my son. So I don't believe you. Have you seen these two? These two mates? You and me, Dad. Now, what am I supposed to do, eh? Toss a coin! It's not like that. I'm trying to tell you that it was nothing sordid. I respected your mum. We were just two young kids. Oh, yeah, and fate drove you apart, did he? Look, what have you come round here for, eh? What's the point? I came... Like I said, I don't like what you're becoming. All that bullying stuff with that girl, Fran. Someone's got to take you in hand. Oh, and you think it should be you, do you? I haven't even had a proper excuse off you yet. But what do you want to know? Where it happened? When? You've watched me growing up all these years. You and me, ma'am. Knowing that I was yours. How do you think that makes me feel, eh? And how do you think I felt 
watching Bobby at your christening saying how proud he was. Getting all the praise for bringing up a fine lad. He deserved it, but it still hurt. And this... This is my man. Who always used to go on to me about being honest. And she's kidding the whole world. Except for you. Look, you don't know what you're saying. This all happened 30 years ago, lad. It's just now that it's out in the open. 30 odd years ago. Time for you to forget. It's history, lad. You can't change it. I don't want it changing. I just want it explaining, that's all. And that's what I'm trying to do. Explain. Yeah, but it's not good enough. So you'd better go. Don't, lad, please don't. Just get out. Just go away. I'm uh, Owen Daniels. Oh, yes, I'm your husband. I've seen you going in and then coming out again. Well, you do the same as well, don't you? Yeah. Uh, see, your neighbours have got a conservatory. Oh, yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Of course, there's a few problems, though. Did something to our damn course. Probably poorly constructed. A lot of cowboys around, you know. You've got to be so careful. I suppose you're right, yeah. Have you ever thought of having one put in yourself? Oh, I'd love one. Well, I hope you didn't think I mean pushy, but, well, that's my job, I sell conservatories. Oh, I thought you worked in the pizza place. Well, I, I did. Yeah. I, about conservatories, would you like me to see whether or not I can add some style and class and value to your home? Oh. So nip round the back and see if there's any way I can increase the amount of sunlight coming into your home. And more importantly, increase the feel of prestige about the place. Well, now? Oh, now's as good a time as any. Well, if it's no trouble. It's no trouble. No trouble at all. OK. You feeling better? Well, I'll be a lot happier when this whole thing's over, yeah. Us. Oh, no. This whole phase of my life. I keep thinking, you know, they're gonna send, like, a big portmobile round by and two or three big priests are gonna jump out and carry you back to the church. What do you mean? <laughs> People press <go? laughs> Yeah, something like that. I'm starting to understand, you know. All this reading I'm doing about the Catholic Church and stuff, it's helping me understand. It's not helping me to understand why our relationship's causing such a problem. But I'm learning more. It'll take you years to understand everything about my religion, you know? I know. Do you want a cup of tea? No, thanks. Uh, Max is at round table tonight, so I've got Claire coming round. Oh, that's nice. Mm. So, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll grab myself a shower and then prepare a little something to eat. How are you, Derek? Oh, I'm um, uh, great, thank you. And um, that's a bit over the top. It's getting better. Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Good. I've uh, made an appointment to see the bishop. I'm going to see him this evening. What for? To inform him of my decision. Mm, can't you just say you're not fit enough to go tell me you're ill or something? I couldn't start being secretive again, Margaret. Well, that led me. Now I have to go and meet him. Something that has to be done. Aye. Don't look too happy for a fellow who's recently earned himself a few, Bob. Careless talk costs lives, you know. <laughs> so what have you done with it, then? Look, can't you just keep that shut? All right, you don't think I'd actually go around and tell anyone, do you? Well, who knows what you... Yeah, well, not a mood, I hope. Hey, listen, stop mentioning what? names, will you? I've told you. Well, it's all right for you, isn't it? I mean, I'm the one that's got to be here on my own of a night when the amazing's are around. And if they suss this... Yeah, well, he will suss you if you've got guilt written all over your face. So you don't think he knows, then? But I was careful, wasn't I? And anyway, if a mood knew the 35 grand of his dodgy money was missing, he'd be going round shopping off legs. I'm a bit worried about this going to the bishop, you know. There's no need to. It's just a man to man chat. Priests seem to have a lot of them. Well, maybe it's because all priests are men. I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I suppose. 
I'm a bit anxious myself about, you know, what line he's going to take. Let me come with you. Don't worry. I can't help it. I mean, I'm frightened. Please, let me come. I can't. I've got to do it on my own. But that's why he wants you on your own. I mean, he doesn't want to lose you. And neither do I. But, I mean, once you're back in there with him, well, he's cleverer than me, and, I mean, he's going to be probably more persuasive. Oh, don't go. I must. I only do what's right. The back of this house could look like something out of homes and gardens once you get the full benefits and effect of one of our conservatories. What if she changes her mind? I'd rather have to see about this first. Oh, don't worry. This is only an assessment. All I'm trying to do is match one of our conservatories to your needs. But we don't need one. Oh, would I be right in saying that you enjoy the brightness, the fresh air and the sunshine of summer? Yeah. Now, would I be also right in saying that you'd enjoy all these comforts in midwinter? Yeah. Well, that's all I'm trying to do. Bring you the benefits of summer in midwinter, all at a price to suit your budget. Now, this is a sealed unit with thermal brake. It's tough, durable, and it's guaranteed to keep out the chill of winter. Make you feel the comforts of, well, the Caribbean. Oh, well, I'll never be out of it then. Neither will me nan. Oh, Tomo. That sounds great, doesn't it? Well, listen, we'll have our tea now and I'll think about it if you can come back later. Don't worry, listen. The last thing I want to make you feel is pressured in any way. I'll see you later. All right, bye. That's the look I'm after. Summary. Some of that cane furniture and a nice table. Right, well, I'll tell you what. While I finish the coat, if you could fill this in for me, just put your name, address, telephone number, bank details, saw code, etc. I'll mm. carry on with this. I think... I know what you're thinking. £5,000 seems to be a lot of money, but when you think in terms of enhancing the value of your property, it's a guaranteed investment. No, it's not that. I just think Rod will want to fill it in himself. OK. You look happy. I need to talk to you. Come in. Hiya. How are you? I meant a long face. What's up? I need to discuss something with you. Mm, I'm in trouble. Look, Caesar's around the flat, will you? All right. Wait for me. Don't be long. All right, love. Yeah? See ya. Nice to see such a cheerful face. Oh, we'll see how long you're cheerful then, eh? What? All right. Hey, Rod. This is home from across the close. Oh, I know who he is. Er, uh, what's the score? Well, look at these. Aren't they nice? This'll give us comfort of summer in midwinter. Eh? Yeah. It'll also give us a big hole in our bank account. No, well, you can choose the payments to suit your own budget. I've just been explaining all the credit facilities to your wife. Hold on. You haven't agreed to anything, have you? No, I was waiting for you to come in. I mean, five thousand pounds a lot of money. <laughs> five grand? Mr Cookill, I know it sounds a lot, but when you're thinking in yeah. terms of... Out. We're not interested, honestly. Yes, we are. Tell them about the sealed unit thing. I think you better go. I have them in. Well, don't. Check with me first. I'm really sorry to have wasted your time. Don't worry. I'll see you. Do you know, once you've signed this bit of paper, it's a legally binding agreement. That's just the point, isn't it? Can't sign anything without you. Oh, it's all that organic stuff. You know, I hate it. Those carrots are all Yeah, it's out of the willpower. Hello. Mm. Hello. Not bad. How are you? Hi. Uh, any coffee on? Uh, you'll have to make fresh. <laughs> <clears throat> How was the round table? Oh, fine. Brian Parsons is causing havoc again, organising some trip to a beer festival. We were talking about the round table, weren't we? Yeah, we were wondering if you'd consider supporting a breast cancer charity. Adopt the likes of us as a worthy cause. Well, I'd have to talk it out with the committee, so... Um... I'd get away with you. If anyone can do it, it'll be you. You're the chairman, aren't you? Yes, but... Uh... I'll work on him. Right, I'll be going. I'll see you right, Claire. Bye, Max. Bye. Don't forget your coat. 
Right, my place next time. Yeah, that'd be great. Listen, why don't you keep that? Give it a try. Oh. It's not as bad as it looks. All right, I'll try anything once. OK, it's thanks been again, Pat. to see you. Thank you, Anna. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Well, you were a bit curt, weren't you? In actual fact, the charities have been sorted out for this year. Uh, we're taking a group of very sick children to Euro Disney. All right, keep your hair on. If anyone can persuade him, I'm sure it'll be you. What's nurse got into you? We only asked you to support a charity. Well, that's fine, but why did she have to go on like that? I mean, there's no reason for her being here in the first place. She's a good friend. She makes my problems seem trivial next to hers. All right. I'm uh, uh, sorry. I, it's just... She makes me feel morbid. She's had two breasts removed and she's walking around with false ones, like, like Samantha Fox and smiling all the time. She reminds me that you've got cancer, that you've had cancer. I just thought that once you'd finished with all this chemo, that we could get on with our lives. But she's part of my life. I can't just drop her because I've finished some treatment. She might need me. And who knows, I may need her. Thanks for coming, sweet. Why all the secrecy? How would you feel if, if you believed something all your life? And one day someone just turns around and tells you that it's all wrong? Well, it depends what it was. If it was something like the earth isn't round, then I don't think I'd care. Does this look serious? Maybe it is. Look, Barry, I've been away and... I'm a lot more grown up, but I can't read your mind. There was a big argument last week between me and Teddy and my uncle Matty. And I was gobbing off to Matty. Suddenly Teddy jumps in with, you can't talk to him like that. And Matty goes as white as a sheet. And then Teddy just lets it slip. That Matty... <laughs> my Uncle Matty is really my alpha. Your dad? Yeah. Um, what, what Teddy says? What, what, what does Matty say? Oh, Matty admits it. And what business is this of Terry's? I mean, why is he staying in it? He's not staying it. He's been cracking up since he found out. And who told him? My mum. That's if she is my mum. I mean, maybe my real mother swapped me in the Aussie or something because I was ugly. I don't know what to do. Hey, you mind the windows with that ball? Hello? Last time I came here, you gave me an ultimatum. And I left in turmoil. Caring, sheltering church that didn't give me the support that I needed. But we were always there. No, you, know, you weren't. I got the standard chat and some platitudes about being married to the church. I knew that. I didn't want bureaucracy. I wanted your personal support. And you were unable to give it. It didn't come naturally to you. And that's the point. As priests, we give out counselling to all, about all sorts. Marriage, divorce, birth control, everything. Yet most of it, it's hollow. Because we don't experience things. And if we do, it's either toe the line or face the consequences. But the church is not blades of grass blowing this way and that in the wind, as some people would have us. 
Well, maybe we should. Maybe we should be more like grass in the wind and be flexible. Because if it's too brittle, the wind will break it. I'd have preferred to be a married priest, but since that option is not open to me, I'll have to settle for being married. I'm not a priest. Take some time to think. I have thought, thanks. I'll see myself now. Come on. We are hoping that uh, you will volunteer us some information. What do you mean, volunteer? You know, I ask a question, and you simply answer a question. It wasn't me. Uh, 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 uh. You are not listening. I have to ask a question first. Where is our good friend, Mr. Grant? Who can you trust, eh? If you can't trust your own mother. She was probably just protecting you. We had something special, didn't we? Me and you. And it still goes on. People let me down. I didn't let you down. I needed that space. I needed to make a decision. Got rid of my baby. And don't you think I still think about that? Do you think I came out of the clinic feeling proud of what I'd done? We could have had our baby. No, I couldn't. I didn't fully trust you. You mightn't have been around forever. I would. I swore I would. And how many women have fallen for that one, eh? For all you know, that might have been what was on your mum's mind with Matty. Only she took the best option for security. Don't call me mother. Grow up, will you? We've got to go and see her anyway. And do what? Wreck more lives. My dad's, Bobby's, your Karen's. It just goes on. I've got to go and see her. I mean, my life's caving in round here. There's nothing left for me down there. Yes, there is. Well, there's me. All right, I didn't trust you over the baby and that. And, yeah, I regret what happened. But I did think, when I come back, I thought we could have a future. Are you just saying this to stop me from going to see me, ma'am? No. That's you, isn't it? You never recognise signs from people. You're always so defensive. I don't know, well, come home, you've got one woman pregnant while you're going out with another one who's got kids. You're threatening people, Barry. You've got to change. Or someone's going to get seriously hurt. So you haven't seen him since? I haven't seen him since the savvy honest. This Effie, I take it you mean this afternoon. I'll call it whatever you want. It's good, Allah. I haven't seen him. But you did break into our flat. Yeah, I've told you, but I was forced into it. Chaldosko. <laughs> You have been very foolish. I won't do it again, honest. I know you won't. You have a nice lady friend, don't you? What's her name? Marcia. Marcia. Hey, come on. Leave her out of this. Oh, we fully intend to. But on one condition. The element of surprise must be with us. 
So Mr. Grant must not know of this little meeting. Otherwise, your nice little lady friend, Marsha, may never, ever be pretty again. Have you been? Out. I know that. That's all you need to know then, isn't it? You look knackered. I'm sorry I told you about Matty. It's all right, eh? It's just that the, uh, the truth sometimes hurts, you know? You pushed me to it, you know, the way you were talking to him like that. It done me head in. I hate secrets. Look what he did to me. Daddy, just stop waffling, will you? You told me something about Matty and you've destroyed my life now. Hey, don't lay the blame on me. I only broke the bad news. I didn't make it. You're starting to analyse too much, Terry. It's because you're hanging around with Fran. I'm not hanging around with Fran. I just talk to her and she listens. Well, you don't want to listen to her because she'll just fill your head full of crap. Where is your head, eh? You're always attacking, striking out at people. Look, I've got every right to attack! Just found out who me half fella is. Yeah, but you'll have a go at anyone, won't you? Terry, I've told you, you're analysing too much. I'll just leave me alone. I'll be all right. It's not just me that's worried about you. It's Stacey as well. She's been round and phoned twice. So where have you been? Here and there. Oh, the other fella's been round as well. Who? Now, as said he wants to have a word with you. What did you say to him? Well... With me analysing you all the time, I thought you wouldn't want to be bothered, so I told him to come back tomorrow. Hiya. Hello. How's things? All right. I've just come to say a big thank you for last week, you know, getting me out of that situation with Rod when he asked about the literacy class. You'd do best to get yourself sorted out so you don't have to keep avoiding the subject. If you're going to tell fibs, you've got to have a brilliant memory. Oh, I've certainly got that. You'd be surprised how many things you have to remember when you can't read. You need to get yourself out of sticky situations. Like my shopping list, for instance. Oh, yeah. God, my heart was in my mouth when I had to get you that shopping. <laughs> I thought you handled the situation very well. You must have thought I was stupid, though, when you found out I couldn't read. Getting this far in your life without people finding out demands a great deal of intelligence, believe me. Do you think so? Yes. No one's ever put it like that before. Well, I guess people wouldn't if they don't understand illiteracy. Look, why don't you pop round later? We'll talk about it. Oh, I don't want to keep you from your family. Oh, that's OK. Margaret's taking Thomas swimming. And Max is usually late. Great. See ya. All right, man. Yo, big man. What can I do you for? Ah, oh, a few filters, please, mate. Some different colours, if you've got them. Trying to keep the kids amused, are you? No, it's this business of the education. I don't mean Leo and Gemma's school again. Yeah, well, look there. Got the lad who started a fire. 
Listen, mate, I'm not having a go, you know. No, I know you're not, Mick. It's just that, well, Jacqueline was there, wasn't she? Well, that's kids, mate. You can't blame yourself, can you? I suppose not. So what's the fell tips got to do at the school, anyway? Well, we're getting a protest down there, me and a few other parents who don't want to be trailing their kids miles away. It's supposed to be someone from the press there as well. Oh, great. Right, I've only got these, 54 each. All right, that'll do. Hiya. Hiya. Hiya, love. Do you reckon she's having a baby or is it wind? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I can't wait till it's all over. <laughs> anyway, how come you're doing the shopping? Thought a woman in your state should be at home practising her breathing exercises. That's it. Push, push, push. Well, you two seem to know an awful lot about it. Modern men, aren't we, Sammy, eh? We read all about it, don't we, Mick? All right, Dee. Yeah, I was there for both of ours. Tissue at the ready to stop the sweat from rolling into my eyes. Oh. <laughs> anyway, love, hope everything comes out all right. Oh. Bye. <laughs> Ta-da. Best of luck with the press, Mick. Uh, can I help you, madam? I don't like them things hanging there. They look tacky. Well, I've got to display them, haven't I? Because if I don't display them, then people aren't going to see them. And if they don't see them, they're not going to buy them. You see, it's called summer day, you know? Happiness, brightness, remember? I think this Derek and Margaret business is starting to take over your life. Things are going to be difficult for him. He says he told the bishop he wants to leave the church. I never move, do you? Dee, if it hadn't have been Margaret, it would have been somebody else. You make him sound like a sex crazy lunatic. No, I don't. I make him sound like a man. Hey, come on, you lot. You can read the sign. Free only at one time. Come on, out. Beat it. Come on. Look, love, you're going to have to try and take a little bit of a back seat for a while. Your Derek's been under pressure for what must seem like ages. Just back off him, eh? Fine, thanks. Just your dad if he's got any old bits of wood, you know. Oh, yeah, the press have been on for some photos, but they can't give an exact time. <sighs> Typical, isn't it? All right, Frank. I like Mick. Hey, listen, mate, have you got any old bits of two by one? Oh, yeah, the Mick's leading the campaign to get the school rebuilt. Well, I'm not exactly leading it, he's but... He's emerging as a natural leader. What's the wood for, then? Get some placards made. Show some people that we mean business. Yeah, I got the press coming over this afternoon. Take a couple of pictures outside the Burns School. I'll well, tell you what, I hope it's more successful than the vigilante thing we had going here. Ah, but it's different when it's your own kids, though, isn't it, Frank? Well, you'll find that out, Sammy, when you have yours, you know. Yeah, you'll shift having in the head for them, won't you? Listen, mate, I don't mean to rush you, but uh, any chance of that wood? Yeah, I'll go and have a look, yeah. What's the panic? I don't want to lose any opportunity to get this campaign seen. I think we've got a big fight in our hands, Frank. OK. Hello. All right, Dexy, lad. How's your belly for spots? <laughs> Yo, mate, Charlie's just been on the phone. He wants to know something about the next Legion dance. Oh, Hello, Dee. Hiya. Good tea? Coffee? Uh, no, thanks. I just had some. Um, got Margaret's. Look, is there anything I... you want me to do? Then most certainly is. You give me I'm blowing up these beach balls, if you like. I'm doing a bit of advertising. Making a mess, more like. Doesn't understand the thing about the retail business, your sister. What about selling the product? Oh, you should have words with Patricia Farnham. They're still barred from here. No way, but... It's a matter of principle, that's why. It's not principle. Um... Pride? No, it isn't pride. Maxi Farnham let me down, didn't he? Let the community down. Yeah, well, one thing I have learned over the last few months is that some things aren't worth the value we attach to them. Like what? The church? I'll take that as a joke. Looks like to us that you're taking the church as a joke. Uh oh. Count me out of this one. All right, Buzz. I wish people wouldn't keep thinking that I'm giving up my religion. Can I just say this? You've got a lot of practicalities to consider. This is your job as well as your religion. You're going to be out of work, you're going to need skills, so you need retraining. Yeah, but I've got the skill of talking to people. 
There's jobs I can do. OK, but you're still going to need retraining. How long is that going to take? Weeks, months, years. And you've got to find yourself somewhere to live. I mean, you can stay with us as long as you like, but... The church will give me accommodation if I need it. But I don't want it. I want to be self-sufficient. I've been cocooned for so long. Exactly. Do you really think you can survive out there not being a priest? Well, one thing I have learned is that I don't think I can survive as one. Well. See you later. I was just in the area and I was wondering if you'd like me to tell you how I could bring a bit of the brightness of summer into your home and, more importantly, help you save on your fuel bills before winter comes on. OK. Good afternoon. Uh, could I have some mints, please? Yeah, of course you can. What do you want? Polo, tree bore, extra strong, muddy mints, Vince Imperials. Any. I'm looking for the elusive Mr. Grant. Have you by any chance seen him? Yeah, yeah, loads of times. He's about that big, you know. Got brown curly hair. You know, I always fail to understand your Liverpool humour. Yeah, well, that's probably because you're not from this country, eh? Go on. So do I take it that you have seen him? Actually, you've just missed him. He came in here, got some sweets, and whoosh! Gone. Just like that. Or oh, was it just like that? Here's 20 pence, sir. Oh, by the way, keep the change, will you? Cheeky swine. You're out of order there, Ron. He wasn't interested in mints. Something shifty about that fella. God, he's getting paranoid. I'm telling you. I can smell a rat whenever he's around. Hello. You see, we've yet to have a complaint over one of our conservatories. They're tough structurally and the low maintenance because of the UPVC frame. And you'll be helping the environment because no rainforests are being chopped down just for your comfort. There you go. I just want to assure you that the money you'll be spending on this, well, it's a way in which your savings can be. Well, your savings will... Oh, look, love, I think you're right. You talk to your daughter first. Oh. All right. Mm. Uh, maybe see Mr Grant, please. Oh, I'm sorry you've just missed him, but, uh, like I said, I uh, don't think he'll be back till tomorrow. Maybe. Hey, where do you think you're going now? Hang on a minute. I check them. We go Jack and Please don't be so foolish. I mean, this is none of your concern. We just simply want to chat with our good old friend, Mr. Grant. Well, he is in here. All right. So uh, where is he? I don't know. And if I did know, I wouldn't be telling you. We'll see. <laughs> No. Forty minutes late. I can't stand it when people aren't punctual. Maybe we should give him the cane when he gets here. <laughs> Listen, Master, how long do you think they'll wait? Dinner. The kids are all right. Look, maybe we should give them another ten minutes. All right, listen, I'll have a word with them. Okay. Come on, Jim. Um, listen, folks, as you can see, uh, people from the paper haven't arrived yet, so if we give well, it up... Hang on a minute. This might be there. All right, look, it looks as though they're here, so let's do it as we practice, right? And let's show them that we mean business, so... What do we want? Yeah! 
When do we want it? Alright, Mr. Rogers. How did your day go? I'm fine if you're a marathon runner. Plenty of leg work, eh, son? Plenty of cup, eh? Soap my feet at first, I think. Hey, tell you what, when I was on the scaffolding, it wasn't only leg work, it was arm work too. It wasn't just your legs knackered, your whole body was worn out. Oh, all right, Dad, I don't want this baby in and all this manly talk. Oh, how did your day go, Sam? I'm sure, it's trying to kick its way out, you know. Well, I've thought of another name, Casey. It sounds like a football. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, well, I wish you'd come up with a couple. Oh, Francis, I'm going for. And if it's a girl, Samantha Francis. Oh, are you trying to put your mark on this child? Yeah, that's Sam. Oh, Tom. It keeps trying to get out to see me. That's what it is. I wish we had a downstairs loo, you know. Tom. Mr. Rogers, I know it's not the same physical graft as the scaffolding and that, but I'll tell you what. You know, I've kept worn out. In fact, I wish I was on the scaffold. At least you can see something for your efforts at the end of the day. Not having any luck, then? Oh, the area they dropped us off in today was all right. But this recession, it's really screwing things up. I mean, there's people with the money, right? But they don't want to spend it. They're just saving it, just in case. I'm going to watch before you dinner. Yeah. Oh, cheers, that's great, thanks. Oh, people will always be edgy about spending big words of cash. That's why Rod Corker got shitty with you. Oh, but the product's good. It's reasonably priced. It's a winner. I've never met a salesman yet who didn't think his product was a winner. I couldn't flog it if I didn't think that, Mr Rogers. But have you got the technique, son? Yeah. I had one almost signed, sealed and delivered today. Uh, well... Almost. Oh, this old lady. I had it eaten off the palm of my hand, didn't I? I mean, I could have got her to sign all the forms. I convinced her she needed a conservatory. But when it came down to the crunch, I couldn't sell it. I knew she didn't need it. Owen, I don't like the idea of you selling some conservatives to some poor old woman who can't afford it. But if that's the game you've chosen to be in, well, so be it. But if you don't like it, get out. But remember, son, you've got a wife and a baby on the way, so you might have to get a proper job. I know, yeah. You see, if you can see the pictures alongside the words, I'm sure it'll help. See, my trouble is, I might know what it says next time I see it. Yeah, but if the pictures and the words are together again, you will. Well, you're just so positive. You understand. Mm, and I'm sure they'll understand at the literacy class. I don't know. My experience of school was just humiliating. They made me feel like I was a dunce. Yeah, but this will be different. They're trained to respect your difficulty, not ridicule it. Hundreds of people go. Look, tomorrow, why don't I go with you to the literacy class? I found out it's a drop-in centre. It won't be anything like you imagine. OK, yeah. Hello. Hiya. Hello. What are you two scheming about, then? Mm. Oh, isn't it lovely when they kiss you? Oh, yeah? And who's they? Well, wouldn't you like to know? Anyway, I better be going. We'll sort of time out. Oh, thanks. That'll be great. I made up. Good. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. So... What she made up about. I persuaded her to go to an adult literacy class. Literacy class? She has difficulty reading. Oh, and uh, you've started a bit of impromptu teaching to help, have you? Hmm, I reckon she'll do all right if she gets into a class, does it properly. You know, I wish you'd take a back seat in all this. I mean, you've got enough on your plate as it is. Which reminds me, did you talk to the round table about supporting a breast cancer charity? Oh, well, like I said before, I mean, the targets and the charities have been sorted out for this year. Yeah, but you collected thousands last year. I mean, sending a child to Euro Disney can't take up all your funds. It's 12 very sick children and three helpers. Yeah, but if you know funds are required elsewhere, can't you cut down the amount of children or the number of helpers? Well, the helpers are very important. I mean, <laughs> not as important as the children, obviously, of course, but, uh, you know, for supervision and organisation. Hold on. Who are these helpers? Sorry? Helpers, Max. You said the round table was funding three places? Well, we... Well, they felt, that the committee felt that it would be useful for research purposes and support for the child and, oh, and uh, good publicity. Stop waffling, Max. The committee ratified. You're going, aren't you? I didn't decide. You didn't refuse, Max, did you? You didn't refuse. Oh, come on, it's not my fault.
Teddy, is that you? Listen, I've been thinking, you know, it's about time we stopped all this fighting. Were arrested as they tried to board last night's ferry to Dublin. I reckon it's about time we sorted ourselves out. Could do with having a chinwag. I want a chinwag as well, Mr. Grant. Good evening. Why don't you just give them what they want? Now, let's not do anything stupid, Mr. Hamoud. I just want to chat, Mr. Grant, you know? About some missing money? Oh, well, I'm sure we can sort something out. Who's got to tell America, Mr. Chow? Who's got to America, Mr. Chow? You know that none of this is easy for me, don't you? Yeah, I do. See, all the time I've been, or rather have been, reactive. I only act to other people's behaviour. I know what reactive means, thanks. I'm sorry. But you see what I'm saying? I haven't done anything off my own back. I always felt pushed into corners. But now I feel... You want to do your own pushing? Well, I hope I don't need to. I only want the best. The least pain, Derek. Life's full of pain. Any adult understands that. And I know you're my big sister, and I know you're looking out for me. But I'm learning to stand now, honest. So why are you still shepherding me? Maybe it's this wonderful Catholic guilt again. We've both failed in the church, me as a nun, and now you as a priest. Well, neither of us failed. We just made critical choices. And that, well, it doesn't stop us loving God. I don't want to fail. I've stopped going to church, but I'm going to go again. Good. Fine. But don't go out of guilt. Go for love. Otherwise, it just becomes destructive. Well, well look what guilt did to me. Right. Here we go. Oh, I'll have water. Sorry, Dad. Oh, it's all right, love. I'll have it. Right, I'm going to have a bath there. I'll be popping out later to see Denise. OK. So I'll see you later. <laughs> hey, will you eat that? Yeah, yeah. You want some cheese on your spud? Oh, yeah. It's all right, I'll get it. <sighs> so your day wasn't much good, then? Oh, I'm getting all the contacts, you know. Finding out how to use my sales plan. Right chat at the right time, you know. Well, you should try it on me, Dad. Maybe he'll buy a conservatory. You're joking, aren't you? You won't fall for that. Yeah, well, I hope someone falls for it too now. And, I mean, we could do with the money coming in, you know. We still need a, a pram and a, and a cot. Sam, I don't want you worrying about money. I've got things lined up. A few are a good few cast iron guarantees. Well, thank God for that. Look, the way I've got it figured, I've got all these customers stacked up like dominoes, like that, one by one. As soon as all the commission starts rolling in, we'll be minted, I'm telling you. Hey, boy, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. 